In this courtroom, Mr. Miller, justice is blind to matters of race, creed, color, religion, and sexual orientation. With all due respect, Your Honor, we don't live in this courtroom, though, do we? No, we don't. However, as regards this witness, I'm going to sustain the defense's objection. How many weeks at a time would you be out to sea without stopping at port? Oh, uh, anywhere from two weeks to uh, several months. Any women on board? Uh, not when I was in the Navy. <laughs> so, during these long voyages, months at a time, out to sea, no women in sight, hundreds of hard-working, robust young men in the prime of their lives, the peak of their natural appetites and desires, their God-given hormonal instincts, anything going on? Uh, going on? Like what? What? Like uh, two sailors down below making flippy flop. Objection. Oh. Miller. We had one guy like that. You haven't ruled on my objection, Your Honor. Go on, Mr. Miller. You had one guy like that. You, you mean a homosexual? He uh, strutted around quarters naked, trying to get everybody to notice him. Made everyone sick. It was destroying our morale. So we let him know this kind of behavior was not acceptable. How'd you do that? What, you, you wrote him a letter? We stuck his head in a latrine after ten of us had used it. Oh, you taught him a lesson, didn't you? Yes, we did. Just like firing Andrew Beckett taught him a lesson. Objection. I withdraw. You were aware when you worked with uh, Melissa Benedict that she had AIDS, is that correct? And she didn't try to conceal it. So you are aware of the difference between a bruise and a lesion, is that correct? Beckett told me he had been hit by a racquetball, and I believed him. Didn't you try to avoid contact with Miss Benedict after you found out she had AIDS? She says, and I quote, that you were repulsed by her. You avoided her. Is that correct? I felt, and I still feel nothing, but the deepest sympathy and compassion for people like Melissa who contracted this terrible disease through no fault of their own.